day where we get the money that they do. <laughs> that year, the Seagulls were playing in the third tier of women's football and lifted the Sussex County Cup. In 2016, they were promoted to the second tier, the Women's Championship, and they joined the fully professional top tier, the Women's Super League, in 2018. They're currently lying fifth in the table, with an FA Cup semi-final debut ahead. We have an ambition to be a top four uh, Women's Super League side, and this facility really helps to, uh, yeah, to, to create that environment to help achieve uh, those, um, those levels. I've come from an era and a generation where this is something we only dreamed of. And actually to be part of it today I think it is wonderful for me. I think it's really important for the next generation of players coming through. The idea eventually is that not only are these new facilities used by the women's first team, but also by the women's pathway players and Albion in the community. It will mean so much I think because um, these, these training facilities will just enhance the way that I play my football and it's just going to be absolutely brilliant. After kicking off this season at the Amex, it's been announced today that the next home fixture will also be at the club's main stadium. Albion's women are coming home. Juliet Parkin, BBC South East Today, Lansing. Well, let's take a look at tonight's fixtures. In League One, Gillingham face Doncaster Rovers at Priestfield. And in League Two, Crawley Town play Exeter City. Kickoff is at 7.45 for both matches. Now, Sarah is with me, and before we get to the weather, Sarah, you have been finding out something quite nice, actually, how to de-stress in autumn. Well, it's a perennial question, isn't it? Which is your favourite season? And every single time we move to a new season, I think, oh, this is my favourite, but actually, I think autumn really has it. I love the colours so much. And it turns out that there's a really good reason why we love the colours so much. So every year, we talk about why do the trees change and what makes the colour science, but also, it turns out there's a very good reason why we feel so good when we look at those colours. Each year, as the weeks pass and the light starts to fade, just before winter sets in, nature treats us to one last delight, autumn colour. No two years are the same. The differing amounts of sun, rainfall and warmth earlier in the year all play a part. Here at Hever Castle, the colours are just starting to emerge and there are weeks ahead of changing vistas. In Mother Nature, it's her favourite time of the year, autumn colour. Light levels are dropping down now, the coldness changes the colour, the chemical reaction in the leaves. But we're looking, whatever I'm going to say, it's going to be wrong, but we're looking at the moment, it's um, pretty grand. It's quite some lovely kind of hot colours here. On this, well, it's warm today, it's going to get chillier, but those hot colours kind of give us a bit of a lift. It looks like if the castle's on fire. This is the Boston Ivy. We reckon 70, 80 years old, and the fiery red at the moment is looking great. This year, the team at Hever are also keen to stress the health benefits of getting outside. Psychologists point to autumn's changes as being an excellent way to enjoy some colour therapy. The reds stimulate the heartbeat and feelings of warmth. Orange tones are a positive colour for mood, while yellow also uplifts mood and stimulates the metabolism. Green is said to be calming and refreshing, blue is associated with pain relief, and purple activates the imagination and creativity. But quite apart from the autumn colour you'll see outside this October, there's another reason to find nature. It's called Shinran Yoku, the Japanese art of forest bathing scientifically proven to have medical benefits. Shinron Yoku was introduced in Japan as part of a national health program nearly 40 years ago. The aim of forest bathing is to spend up to two hours under the forest canopy, although just 15 minutes has also shown to be beneficial. You need to put your phone away and walk in silence, or simply sit and take in your surroundings. Scientists say that monitoring your breathing, closing your eyes, and listening to the rustle of the trees all help to lower blood pressure and stress levels. And yes, if you want to, you can even hug the trees, although that is optional. 
She's laughing at me. I've never hugged a tree. I've never hugged a tree before. But I will say, I did feel quite calm and zen after I did all of that. It really was just absolutely marvellous. Now, of course, you can't go out under the canopy of trees when it's far, far too windy. And the next 36 or so hours, that's the story we're looking at uh, because this low pressure that's brought us the tropical air we've got at the moment is still with us right the way through until at least the middle part of Thursday when we will start to pick up something much colder. But before that, we have got some tropical air with us, so it's going to be mild, particularly tonight, but it's going to be wet and windy, and then it's going to turn much, much colder. So because we had some rain earlier on and then we sort of cleared up through the afternoon, but the next belt of wet weather pushing in overnight tonight, the greens suggesting that we do have some heavy bursts in the forecast into tomorrow morning and the winds picking up as well. Look at these overnight temperatures. That's above average for day, let alone by night, 15 or 16 Celsius to start us off tomorrow morning. The rain clears away quite quickly. Then we do have some showers just to zip through. And then the winds really will start to pick up because we've got another frontal band coming in tomorrow night into the early hours of Thursday. So wind gusts up to or in excess of 40 miles an hour, especially along the coast. Tomorrow night we could actually be 50 miles an hour. And then our old friend, the Air Mass chart, showing the blues digging in through Thursday and the first part of Friday. At one stage, we were thinking we might lose as much as 10 degrees day uh, Tuesday to Friday. I don't think we're going to go quite as cold as that, but certainly through Thursday, yeah, we've got some sunshine, that wind coming in from the northwest, and look at the impact on the temperatures. Today, we were very high teens. By Thursday, 11 or 12 Celsius. Remember tonight, we're going to be around 16 or 17 overnight, so a real difference. And then we keep high pressure for the first start of the weekend, but then we get the next belt of wet weather moving in by the time we move through to Sunday. So it is, as I said, I think if you saw me on Sunday, keep all of your elements of your wardrobe to hand this week. That's the story we still go with right the way through the forecast period because We've got that heavy rain tonight and then again tomorrow night, much colder behind it for Thursday. Sort of middling temperatures after that. Still some rain at times though. I need to go and hug some trees to calm down after all that, Sarah. Thank you very much indeed. That is it from us for now. But Chrissy will be here with you after the national news at 10. Bye bye. I'm the doctor. This is Jas. This is Dan. Why don't I know about this? And who else does? Run for your life! Maybe we should have brought that to you a little bit more gently. Why is that? Our final fight has begun. There's no use being squeamish. We've got the future to save. We don't have any more time. No! I can't help feeling that some of this is my fault. Such stuff as dreams are made on. That's BBC One on a Tuesday night as Dame Judi Dench discovers extraordinary ancestry in all new Who Do You Think You Are at nine. Reserve your place on the sofa right now.